Hi, Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And in today's Ask Dr. Lyons question, I answer, should my child with autism be taking a vitamin D supplement? Let's get to PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to warn you, I'm pretty excited about this video. I love doing these Ask Dr. Lyons videos, but this one on vitamin D, woo! There's a lot of good information in here that's really going to help you with your child. So let's get straight to it. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is a potent neurosteroid important for brain, neural development, and antioxidant mechanisms. Cerebral spinal fluid contains vitamin D and enzymes which take part in vitamin D synthesis in the brain. Vitamin D acts on genomic and non-genomic pathways. That's really important. So for genomic pathways, vitamin D forms a complex and then can regulate certain gene expression. So yes, vitamin D actually regulates gene expression in your body. Non-genomic pathways. Vitamin D is involved in several signaling pathways mediated by kinases and phosphatases. Okay, you're probably thinking kinase phosphatase, what's that? You can think of it just as red light, green light. So kinase turns a protein on and phosphatase turns a protein off. They do that with some elegant chemistry, but you can basically think of it as red light, green light system of a cell, whether proteins are turned on or off. And vitamin D is involved in several of the signaling pathways that are mediated by kinases and phosphatases. So vitamin D acts on genomic pathways by regulating gene expression as well as non-genomic pathways it's involved in proteins, turning them on and off. Amazing, right? An association has been established between autism and vitamin D with sunlight exposure, skin pigmentation, season of birth, location, latitude, all being implicating factors. And I think many of you know that already. Vitamin D availability. Vitamin D is converted into 25 hydroxyvitamin D, it's also abbreviated 25-OHD, by the cytochrome 27A1 in the liver or intestine. Okay, basically that's saying when you have vitamin D in your body, this cytochrome converts the vitamin D into a metabolite. So this one metabolite, 25-OHD, is the major circulating form of vitamin D in our body. And it has a long half-life, therefore it's the best indicator of serum vitamin D levels. So when you go and get a blood test for vitamin D, it's technically measuring this vitamin D metabolite as opposed to the actual molecule of vitamin D. But they do that because it has a long half-life and it's the best indicator of vitamin D levels. And vitamin D blood test can easily be ordered by your doctor. 2008 is when the theory about decreased vitamin D levels via sun avoidance and the association with autism was first scientifically published. So a lot of this information and a lot of these questions, a lot of this research is relatively new, less than 10 years. Clinical studies of vitamin D and autism. There have been a few, and I'll go through four of them here with you. Egyptian children with autism have significantly lower levels of the vitamin D metabolite, as well as lower calcium serum values compared to healthy controls. So that was one study. Another study compared the vitamin D metabolite level in U.S. Caucasian boys with autism. They were 48 years old. And they used a control group of typically developing children, but they were having outpatient tonsillectomies. Now, why they chose that as a control group, I do not know. But what is really interesting was that they found no differences observed in the levels of the vitamin D metabolite. But the majority of all the children had very low levels of 25-OHD, of the vitamin D metabolite. That's pretty amazing. Not too shocking. <laughs> it's definitely a scientific fact to note. In 2010, a group of adult outpatients, so this was adults, with psychiatric disorders 
were tested for the vitamin D metabolite levels and found that those who had autism or schizophrenia had significantly lower levels than the others. This study also demonstrated considerable improvement in several patients when they were given vitamin D treatment. So psychosis and depression improved. That's pretty amazing, right? It's just vitamin D. Another study of mothers in Somali origin with children with autism in Sweden found that the mothers of the children with autism had the lowest levels of vitamin D. So those are four clinical studies of vitamin D and autism. So let's go a little bit more into vitamin D and autism. One of the suggested mediating roles of vitamin D in autism is its involvement in the absorption of magnesium. And magnesium plays a critical role in brain development. Magnesium also plays a critical role in sleep. So for those of you who were on my sleep webinar I just taught a few days ago, you learned all about the importance of magnesium in sleep. And if you weren't on that webinar, please sign up for my emails at awetism.net and you'll be notified of all my other teachings. The absorption of magnesium requires adequate levels of parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. So again, vitamin D, magnesium, there's an interplay there. Nutrition, season, and sun exposure are all important factors. This is where it starts getting a little bit more interesting. Dietary vitamin D is absorbed predominantly in the small intestine. So gut health is very important. Let's talk more about vitamin D in the gut. Here's a wonderful quote from a great scientific article. For a long time, the gut has been known to be a major target tissue of vitamin D. All right, so let's get into that a little bit more. It's super exciting. I don't know if you can tell. Vitamin D in the gut is freaking amazing. Here's another metabolite. It's an important metabolite. It's called 1-alpha-25 dihydroxy vitamin D3. And it's abbreviated there. The abbreviation doesn't make it easier to say. And it's a hormonal vitamin D metabolite. That's usually what it's referred to. Now this metabolite plays a vital role in being one of the main regulators of the human genome. We talked about that in the beginning. This vitamin D metabolite is one of the main regulators of the human genome. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you want to turn genes on, want to turn genes off? Vitamin D metabolite is extremely important. It's also important in regulating gut physiology and homeostasis, calcium and phosphate absorption, epithelial integrity or barrier function, aka leaky gut, detoxification and protection against infection. I even titled this slide shocking. Vitamin D and the gut. Shocking. Vitamin D receptor levels are higher in intestinal epithelial cells than any other tissues and cell types. So the vitamin D receptor is where the vitamin D and actually the metabolites bind to on a cell. So vitamin D receptors are higher in the gut than anywhere else in your body. Gut Epithelial and immune cells also express cytochrome 27B1 and thus synthesize the very important hormonal metabolite of vitamin D, the 1-alpha 25-dihydroxy vitamin D. Most people think cytochromes are only located in the liver. They're not. You actually have cytochrome expressed on gut epithelial cells and immune cells. It's amazing. And what does vitamin D need to turn into the very important hormonal vitamin D metabolite? Cytochrome 27B1, which is conveniently located as well in the gut. The body is amazing, isn't it? This hormonal metabolite, the dihydroxy, upregulates tight junction proteins. And so I put, say, what? <laughs> it's like, seriously? Huh, okay, so this very important hormonal vitamin D metabolite regulates intestinal permeability or everyone else likes to call it leaky gut. Whoa, okay, that is beyond interesting. 
in ulcerative colitis patients, the serum 25-OHD, again, that's the metabolite that's actually measured in your blood test, they found that with UC patients, serum vitamin D concentration is inversely correlated with mucosal inflammation and disease activity. Basically, the lower the vitamin D that was measured in the blood test, the more disease activity you have. Not a good thing. Vitamin D deficiency may contribute to UC inflammation by disrupting epithelial barrier function. Totally makes sense, right? Because the sentence before says how the hormonal vitamin D metabolite controls tight junctions in your gut. So completely logical, completely makes sense, completely shocking. So to go one step further, the hormonal vitamin D metabolite regulates innate and adaptive immune response. Vitamin D and the gut microbiota. I know, I'm going there. I'm totally going there because the research is going there. And this is recent research, like a year or less. It's cool stuff. Damaged intestinal mucosa may allow for easy microbial translocation, thus triggering an immune system response. So basically, if you have a leaky gut, your bacteria can go where it should not be going, and your immune system is going to be triggered. That makes sense. In mice, vitamin D deficiency at birth causes lower numbers of clonic bacteroides and protobella later in life. Interestingly, probiotic treatment with Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG and Lactobacillus plantarum increases the vitamin D receptor protein and the expression of target genes in human and mouse intestinal epithelial cells. Crazy, right? Introducing two strains of bacteria is influencing your body to produce more of the vitamin D receptor protein that's on your cell. And that influences the upregulation or downregulations of genes in your body. So you can see there is a dynamic interplay between bacteria and our body, and our body being the vitamin D receptor expression in the gut. Absolutely amazing. It's dynamic. We exist synergistically with bacteria. Here's some really cool stuff. In a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, parallel arm, multi-center study. That's, I know a lot of words, but it means in a good clinical trial. So, in a good clinical trial, the oral probiotic Lactobacillus luteri increased circulating vitamin D levels relative to placebo. Whoa. Now remember, lactobacillus ruteri. That might sound familiar to some. Keep that in your mind. Okay, next slide. This is the last slide. We're getting back to vitamin D and autism. Two open-label trials, one being in Turkey and one being in China, found high-dose vitamin D improves the core symptoms of autism in about 75% of autistic children. Again, this is all recent information, and this is why many parents ask me the question, oh, should I be giving my child vitamin D? It's important to understand all the science behind it. So it's a very logical question to ask, because that is a great improvement in just giving vitamin D. Anyone remember the fantastic 2016 cell article titled Microbial Reconstitution Reverses Maternal Diet-Induced Social and Synaptic Deficits in Offspring? In that article, they found that Lactobacillus ruteri recovers social behavior in mice and restored the number of oxytocin and immunoreactive neurons in the mice's brain. So, whoa, right? Whoa! Lactobacillus ruteri, on the last slide, was shown to increase the levels of vitamin D compared to placebo. And now here we have in an autistic mice model that Lactobacillus ruteri recovers social behavior in mice and restored the number of oxytocin immunoreactive neurons in the mice's brain. It's amazing the interaction between probiotics and us and our overall gut health, and how the gut interacts with the brain. It's a whole body system. 
gut health is absolutely vital when healing autism. Absolutely vital. Special diets are that powerful. It's the actual chemistry that the special diet influences and changes in your body. And that's really where the power comes from. So giving your child a probiotic, totally logical. There's different science on different strains. Completely makes sense. Giving your child vitamin D, certainly would make sense looking at the scientific research. But if you're not taking into account overall gut health, you're missing a big part of the picture of healing autism. Special diets are that powerful. And here are some references. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit longer than most, but I can't help it. I'm super excited. I really want to help you heal your child's autism. So please discuss with your doctor the importance of healing your child's gut. It's a really important problem to make sure is addressed.